Hi, my name is Ayn and I'm a physical therapist at Revo Physiotherapy. I'm Dina Griffin, the nutrition mechanic. I'm a registered dietitian and board certified sport dietitian. And I'm super excited to have Dina here today as an expert um, to talk about iron deficiency in endurance athletes. And this is a super important topic to go over during marathon training season um, because oftentimes athletes come to me about, you know, recovery and feeling fatigued all the time. Um, and so, Dina, can you just tell us a little bit about what iron deficiency is versus anemia? That's a great question. I mean, I'm glad you asked that one because there's a lot of confusion and sometimes the terms are used interchangeably when they shouldn't. So in general, when we talk about iron deficiency, it's more a depletion of iron stores that's starting to occur or has occurred. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a progression depending on um, the athlete mm -hmm. as to um, what happens. Then um, this is monitored via blood work is mm -hmm. most common. So there are a couple stages along this deficiency um, progression and so anemia is sort of that end stage we mm -hmm. actually never want to get there but that's when um, not only our stores of iron which is measured with ferritin predominantly um, but hemoglobin is also very low um, and so that's that anemia where you actually see the red blood cells mm -hmm. change in color in um, quantity or amount mm -hmm. And then hemoglobin is also a measurement of that. So that anemia is sort of like worst case scenario in that um, iron deficiency progression. Got it. Um, and then what are some signs and symptoms of iron deficiency that athletes should look out for? It's important to pay attention. I think that's helpful when you know we really can learn our bodies. So a lot of the common signs and symptoms would be um, fatigue. Mm -hmm. If you notice you're not bouncing back from your workouts, your runs, or whatever workouts you're doing very well, you feel exhausted. Mm -hmm. um, shortness of breath. Which sometimes it's, that's what we feel all the time, right? I know. <laughs> so it's hard to sometimes yeah. to, like, is this normal or is this my. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, also, so for some people, even just skin mm -hmm. color, just that pale, you know, pale right. skin color color or yeah. darkness around the eyes. Okay. Um, some people feel heart beat kind of just stronger mm -hmm. or just changes there in mm -hmm. terms of that rhythm. Mm -hmm. um, sleep can be affected. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even nausea is a sign. Yeah. So it's a pretty broad range of signs and symptoms. Mm -hmm. But I would say fatigue is probably the one that's yeah. most common. Yeah. Okay. So any kind of like in decline in performance? Rapid decline in performance. That's also a good one, right? right? Because that aerobic capacity right. is what's affected mm -hmm. once we become, once we're depleting our iron yeah. stores more mm -hmm. or to a certain level that might be somewhat individual, yeah. but um, not able to complete what we think should be easier workouts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, if that's a struggle and then mm -hmm. you're not recovering well, and that's, so yeah, definitely right. the performance side, something mm -hmm. to pay attention to mm -hmm. if you keep a training log right. or other metrics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, how common is iron deficiency in the male population? Ooh, yes. Because we, we always think about females getting yeah. iron deficiency, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... I think there are a couple issues with males and knowing the rate of iron deficiency or anemia is for one we haven't studied the male population mm -hmm. as much because it was just thought you know women or female athletes are the mm -hmm. ones who struggle the most but actually there are a couple newer studies showing that male athletes there's a higher incidence or prevalence of deficiency oh, iron deficiency yeah. so it's getting where we used to think eight to ten percent mm -hmm. or so of um, male athletes mm -hmm. have iron deficiency it's now up yeah we've seen some cases where it's more 40 to 50 percent of marathoners oh that's a huge and triathletes yeah. yeah yeah interesting yeah. so okay so if you think you have some of the symptoms of iron deficiency Dina what are some ways to get evaluated for this I would say 
a great tip is to go to a sport-minded physician mm -hmm. who knows you as an athlete mm -hmm. and puts you in that context. Mm -hmm. um, that's a great starting point. Mm -hmm. So if that's not an option for someone, depending on geographical location mm -hmm. or other reasons, there are ways to order um, lab lab work or blood work over the internet. And I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. Especially so, in Boulder, I feel like there's a lot yeah, of options for that. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So we have some companies that do athlete-specific blood panels mm -hmm. to look at iron deficiency and other markers for performance and health. Um, but you can also go to some general like Quest Labs mm -hmm. or Direct Labs and order for yourself the panels, mm -hmm. and then you know, go to your local lab. The problem is the interpretation, which right. you may have wanted to chat yeah. about. Yeah. yeah, so like from personal experience and then just from um, being around a, around a lot of high-level runners, the issue seems to be that you go to your primary care doctor and, you know, the range for normal ferritin levels is so broad. It's 15 to 150. Right? And so a lot of female athletes hang around the lower end. Yeah. And like, for example, like I was 17, my friend was 15, right? So really right on the borderline. But that's still considered the normal range, so my doctor didn't have like a recommendation for this. Um, so what do you suggest in this circumstance and what is like a good number for runners to kind of be around in terms of ferritin levels? I'm glad you're bringing this up too, I mean, just to your earlier comment about the range is very broad for what is being checked for um, ferritin, which again mm -hmm. is your stored iron. So if you are on that lower end, but your physician is mm -hmm. saying, you know, that's, you're, you're normal, but on the low end, mm -hmm. I would be mindful and know that um, for an endurance athlete, especially female endurance mm -hmm. athlete, we want to have ferritin mm -hmm. closer to that 60 mm -hmm. or 65 mm -hmm. range. It's a little, if it's a little higher, that's yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. um, so just knowing that the low side of normal is really not optimal mm -hmm. for performance. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, th I think it's probably fine for like functional activities if you're just trying to get exactly. by day to day, like that's probably fine. Yeah. But if you're really trying to like, you know, set new PRs or really go out there and like, um, accomplish something on the road, then it's probably better to be somewhere around 60. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then also, what is the best way to supplement? Is there a difference between iron pills versus liquid iron versus uh, dietary iron? Good. Yeah. Well, so I, I have to add I'm that ideally we want to test iron levels. Mm -hmm. Um, before we do any supplementation, mm -hmm. but in your case, for example, you knew there were signs right. that you were yeah. on the lower end. So supplementation, I would say also if we could do some manipulations yeah. of food, mm -hmm. because that can make an impact on right. what's happening with iron yeah. repletion. Mm -hmm. um, then when we go to supplementation, if that's the you know mm -hmm. needed, um, we want to look at dosing. Mm -hmm. Um, the form of the iron. Mm -hmm. Liquid iron tends to be a little bit better absorbed, but it also depends on the form. So there mm -hmm. are many kinds of iron supplements. Mm -hmm. Some of them are more harsh on the digestive tract mm -hmm. and can have some negative side effects. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's not really one answer to this question right. yeah, yeah. because I, if I were involved, yeah. I'd look at food Mm -hmm. When's your big race? Right. What's your training volume? Yeah. Diet and all these things, and mm -hmm. then pick a supplement that that would be appropriate. Also, right. looking at blood work. Gotcha. So a lot of layers. There. Yeah. Um, I've also encountered a few athletes who think they're iron deficient without ever having blood work done. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about iron overdose? Yeah, and that does speak to the importance of testing mm -hmm. before supplementation. Mm -hmm. um, overdosing or toxicity of iron mm -hmm. is pretty serious, mm -hmm. and you may not notice anything within the first couple days right. of that setting in, mm -hmm. but the um, effects of that can be, I mean, pretty severe in mm -hmm. terms of seizures, heart problems, mm -hmm. and things. So. Um, it's not that more is better type right. of approach when mm -hmm. we talk about so iron, being at a good level, right? Finding the mm -hmm. optimal level. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, okay, so you're 
you find out you're iron deficient, um, your doctor or dietitian recommends that you're supplementing, um, how often should you recheck your ferritin levels throughout the year during training? Okay, so I, I always have more to add to your question. Yes, no, no, please do. I think, well, for one, ferritin, again, is that marker of stored iron, mm -hmm. but it's not always the most complete picture of right. what's going on. Yeah. So I would say if we can get a complete blood count, CBC, mm -hmm. right. uh, platelet count would be amazing. Mm -hmm ferritin, and then also a couple other iron markers, serum, iron, mm -hmm. and total iron binding capacity. Right, there's that's, always more to the story than what we think it is. Yeah, and so that's a bigger picture, mm -hmm. and we can be more definitive and conclusive. Um, but if all we had is ferritin, or we all have those right. other markers, I would say a couple times per year, mm -hmm. upwards of maybe four, depending on right. the level of athlete. Mm -hmm. And also, to note, um, ferritin is sensitive to um, inflammation, mm -hmm. so it can be oh, elevated yeah. if we have just right. gotten over an illness or we're in right. some sort of fighting an, of an infection. Yeah, That ferritin can appear normal mm -hmm. when actually it's a response to what else is going right. on with the body. Mm -hmm. And then on the flip side, ferritin can be low mm -hmm. if we're just starting our training program. Mm -hmm with that, maybe for sports, right. that dilutional yeah. anemia effect. Right. Um, so we want to be choosy mm -hmm. when we have our blood work done right. to test for iron. So I'd say early on in training or maybe off season. Yeah. And then ideally four to six out weeks out from big race okay. or the main yeah. event of the year. All right. So then if you're going to get blood work tested throughout the year to monitor your levels, get a complete blood cell count, and also get ferritin levels. Yes, and serum iron, and okay. I would add, yeah. I always love blood work, because it just yeah. gives you much more right. pressure. And yeah. then we look at the trends and yeah. work from there. Right, so then yeah. you can monitor it throughout the year and see what your baseline kind of is. Yes, perfect. Okay. Perfect. Um, so, Dina, in terms of like everyday dietary needs, um, what, what kind of foods are rich in iron? Mm. So for those who are omnivores, we've yeah. got um, animal-derived proteins, mm -hmm. right? So this is your red meat, uh, if you like organ meat, mm -hmm. like liver yeah. or heart, you know, those are yeah. some good sources. Um, but seafood mm -hmm. and other poultry can be an option. Mm -hmm. A little bit in eggs, although that can not always be the best source. Mm -hmm. And then plant Plant sources, we've got legumes, your beans, mm -hmm. um, leafy greens, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, mm -hmm. and other nuts. Um, you know, those, it's like a lot of the plant foods we should right. be eating anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but um, there is a difference in the absorption between the animal proteins and the plant ones. So we have to eat a lot more mm -hmm. of plant protein right. sources or plant iron rich sources mm -hmm. to get that same threshold. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Dina, that's all the questions I have for you in terms of iron deficiency. Is there anything else that you want to add um, that's super important for marathoners and endurance athletes to know? I mean, iron is one of the biggies. Mm -hmm. I'm with micronutrients and minerals, but honestly, there are a few others that are important. So mm -hmm. I think this goes back to the blood work and right. really being empowered in that mm -hmm. sense and knowing right. it's a side of you that you can't really guess. You right. have to look and, and test and do that, that right. upfront work. Mm -hmm. And then it can be super helpful for right. health and performance. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Dina, for speaking to us about iron deficiency. Thank you. Thank you.